Thomas Cook's collapse in the early hours of September the 23rd hit the travel industry like an earthquake. The media coverage has largely centred on the employees who've lost jobs and customers who've lost holidays. But the consequences of the group's failure are far-reaching for the travel industry. After all, this was the oldest travel company in the world, enormous in scale with operations in over 100 countries. Its tentacles stretched into all corners of the travel industry. Thomas Cook was vertically integrated, which means it owned the holiday components like airlines and hotels, it was a tour operator putting those components together and it was a retail agent distributing the packaged components to customers through its high street stores and online. However, it also worked extensively with third-party suppliers, tour operators and agents in every conceivable permutation. For example, Thomas Cook Tour Operator would use third-party hotels or airlines to create packages and then sell them through third-party travel agents. Similarly, a third-party tour operator might use Thomas Cook flights to create a package and then distribute those packages through Thomas Cook's travel agents. The situation is complex because each different combination shifts the contractual liability and the seller's obligations. So when a customer bought a Thomas Cook package, either through a travel agent or directly from the tour operator, the vast majority of these packages included flights and were sold under Thomas Cook's Atoll, meaning customers will be able to claim from the Air Travel Trust Fund. Current estimates put the total claim on the fund at more than £500 million, which will exhaust the reserves and result in a large claim on the ATT's insurance policy. Where customers paid on credit card, the CAA will likely refer them to make a claim with their card issuer under the Consumer Credit Act. Those losses are likely to be in the hundreds of millions too and will ultimately land on Thomas Cook's merchant acquirers. Many third-party tour operators use Thomas Cook flights to create their packages. The package travel regulations mean that those tour operators must replace the flights at no cost to their consumer or offer a full refund. Unfortunately, the cost of replacement flights can be many times more expensive. As a third example, Thomas Cook retail agents sold package tours organised by third-party tour operators. In these cases, the contract is between the tour operator and the customer, and the holiday must still be delivered whether or not Thomas Cook passed the customer's money over to the tour operator. The money due to tour operators is known as pipeline money, and it's all disappeared into the £3 billion black hole on Thomas Cook's balance sheet. Compounding the problem, it's becoming clear that in an effort to bring in more cash, Thomas Cook Retail had collected far more from customers than it normally would, either by taking higher deposits at the time of booking, or by collecting final balances much earlier than the usual 12 weeks before departure. Tour operators are only just discovering that their exposure is significantly higher than they'd expected. While some may be able to recover their lost pipeline money through ABTA's retail bond scheme, many will be disqualified from making a claim as a result of extending credit terms to Thomas Cook Retail. We've been helping our clients to unravel this mess, but the fallout is only just beginning. Sadly, the prospect of a domino effect throughout the travel sector supply chain is inevitable.